Let me introduce you to my guests, and uh, I'm glad to have you gentlemen here with me uh, this evening. Uh, Bona Simon Kimutai, he's not a stranger to any one of you. He has appeared on many interviews this past week, and we all know why, because of the new implementation, and even the past, the week before, with the NYS buses uh, that have started operating on some of the routes within the city. And uh, he represents the Matatu Owners Association as the chair. Thank you for joining us, sir. Next to him is uh, Bona Ka Constant uh, Cap. When a constant cap is an urban planner, so he understands a lot about uh, what needs to go into in terms of policy, making this a success. What we see, this is just an angle or an aspect of urban planning, and he has a lot to share. In fact, earlier in the day, he was at Citizen TV. This is a keen uh, story, a story of keen interest for the media. Thank you also for making time for us. And uh, next to him, uh, we have Bona John Methu. He is the spokesperson for the Association of Matatu Operators, and there's a reason reason why uh, representatives from the Matatu industry have been uh, included in this panel. We had the NTSA uh, uh, invited to be represented here, but uh, they would not, they could not be able to join us. Uh, they say it was short notice, but we hope uh, we'll be able to engage them as this story uh, is not en ending here. So let's set the uh, context of uh, what we're discussing uh, this evening. The government has revived plans to ease the city's infamous traffic jams through lanes reserved for public transport, technically called bus rapid transit system. The Kenya National Highways Authority uh, already started marking two major highways, this was last week, that will be used by high capacity buses to ferry passengers. Seth Olale has been on this beat and filed this report. Public service vehicles playing the thicker superhighway on Mombasa Road will from next week use dedicated bus lanes technically called Bus Rapid Transit System. The Kenya National Highways Authority, Kenya, which is marking out the specific lane, says the changes are geared at facilitating easy movement of PSVs in Nairobi metropolitan area. Transport Cabinet Secretary James Masharia, who briefed the Senate Committee on Roads on the government's strategic plan to restore sanity in the sector, said that the Thika Superhighway will be the first of the six roads to be fixed as part of public transport reforms that will also involve the expansion of the road network. When you talk to the people, operators of the Matatu Owners Association, MOA, they say that the fares go up or they are high because the time of transporting passengers is very high, especially when it rains. So we've had sessions with MOA. The other targeted roads are Langata, Juja, Jogo and Waiyakiwe. The plan will also involve the acquisition of high-capacity public service vehicles that can transport up to 80 passengers at once. In addition, some lanes will be reserved for emergency vehicles such as ambulances and police cars and those carrying VVIPs. Personal and small capacity vehicles will be banned from the special lanes marked in red bus rapid transit. There will be those issues which um, we have to deal with in terms of benchmarking uh, both the NYS and, and what should be charged. But the critical thing is not even N NYS. The critical thing is to make sure that we have an efficient transport system, very fast, and also very modern, because as we do these buses, we have to make sure that uh, anybody can use them. The new initiative is being coordinated by the Nairobi Metropolitan Area Transport Authority. The authority hopes it will encourage more people to use the high-capacity PSVs to access the city's central business district rather than using personal cars that continue to congestion. Industry Matatu CEO in Jam. Once to me pato hila in moja, ata tungye penda serikali tuonge zengine apili. Because watu wanavenye jam mefunguka all through. Na itafanya watu wengi wala kuna personal vehicles, wakuji wanza kutumia matatu. Kwa mbapoa, hmm. serikali ya wezi fanya besara na watu waka. Iyo ni, kum, ni kumisa, iyo ni kumisa watu waka waida. Hakuna jami itakuwa, sisi na, na jami itakuwa, wenye, itakuwa sawa kabisa. Yes, we took kind line yao, personal line yao, personal. It will help ease and up uh, traffic because um, I think um, PSB they have a specific uh, speed they're supposed to maintain. I think 80 kilometers per hour. Already up to 24 national youth service buses charging low rate fares have been ferrying passengers located in densely populated locations such as Kibera, Kairobangi, Kawangware and Madare. 
The introduction of the new bus rapid transit lanes exclusively meant for public service vehicles is not only meant to fasten transportation from the outskirts to the CBD but also easing congestion right within the CBD. As you can see right behind me, this has been the case in the past years but now Nairobi residents hope that that will change and they have welcomed the new move. Set Olale NTV, Nairobi. So let me put it straight to the panel, uh, go down the panel just to ask of the coverage that you've seen, whether it's on radio, on TV, uh, on uh, the papers, uh, what you've seen reported about this, has it been uh, adequate, has it been accurate? Uh, what I would say is that it's the right move towards easing uh, congestion in urban setups. I would have called it myself, it's not bus rapid uh, transit system. The bus rapid transit system is a bit different because it has ramps, it has four doors, the bus is going to have four doors. This would just mass transit. Maybe we'll graduate ourselves eventually to a uh, bus rapid system. So you tell me what we, we've just looked at here isn't quite what it has been reported as no, bus um, rapid well, I transit think system. Communicating would have been uh, it is mass transit. Okay. If we go to real system of BRT practiced in the world, it has ramps where passengers will have to be in either side. When the bus is on the other side, they would alight from this end. When it's on the other end, they would alight on the other end. But this is great. It's beautiful. Um, you know, a dedicating lane to PSV is great. And I'm sure this uh, um, should be introduced to more corridors okay. as opposed to a few corridors that are there because this will do blow to snarl ups by over 70 percent all right and from an urban planner as you've seen it being uh, spoken of as a brt and uh, bona kimutai has just pointed out uh, technically it isn't quite what is uh, brt as is known elsewhere it has it been accurate in the reportage um when you look at it from the brt standards global standards, that does not qualify as brt Okay. What we are doing now is we are just creating a segregated lane because there are many more expectations that come with a BRT system. Um, we have a level station entry, you know, such that the le level of the, the, the station is the same level as the bus to enable people with, say, wheelchairs, yes. um, elderly people to walk into uh, access easily. We have uh, priority of the buses at, at uh, intersections and, and junctions. Um, among you know, such, and then we have timing, fleet management plans. There's much more that comes technically to, to call it a fully fledged BRT. Okay. What we have, what we have now, is segregated PSV lanes, uh, which we can we, we can call maybe bus lanes that are being uh, set set aside. At least based on the communication that we have been receiving from the the Ministry of transport. All right. And so at least that's another, it echoes what uh, Bonakimutai says. Uh, Bonamethu, in your view, what you've seen having been the focus from the media, has it given the adequate voice, uh, you know, uh, voices as a platform? Uh, thank you, Bonamak Masai. <clears throat> to me, uh, I would only recognize the word uh, BRT. Okay. But to Matato people, whatever is being done, it doesn't make any sense to us. Even, but, even in how we have reported it, how we've said it, in, whether it's in radio stations. Earlier we were talking about uh, the governor being on one of the vernacular stations and he was explaining it. Even in how we've explained it, it doesn't make sense to the Matatu uh, industry operators. Uh, uh, but Masai, I can tell you for free. The whole plan is good. And I said here last time, the planning and how we are willing to do what we are plan, planning to implement, it is good when it is said. But when it comes to implementation, that's where the problem is. Because uh, I don't see why we should talk of a BRT, and uh, then we dedicate a lane, while we have matatus, more than 15,000 vehicles, and we don't tell people, where do we take this thing? All right. Because that's why I'm saying it doesn't make to, sense to us. In documentary in the government uh, archives and all this, it is, has been there for the last 10 years. All right. But to me at this point, it doesn't make sense to Matato people. Uh, actually, like my friend has said here, you hear there are some uh, uh, special things to be na done in a BRT. So we don't know what kind of a BRT these people are telling us. Okay. Because we have not seen them. We don't know even the way they marked that, that uh, dedicated lane. As it you can was, see in the pictures here. Yeah, it was marked far the other end. 
So we don't know what they are going to do about it when the, the buses, the BRT want uh, people to alight. Yeah, what or to bond. Okay, and that's something we'll talk about. And you can now also explain because it came up in people's observations why that lane and how it's going to work. You speak for at least the Association of Matatu Operators. And it's easy to confuse, but uh, Bwana Kimutai speaks for the Matatu Owners Association. And you could probably clarify how many people you represent under your fold and whether, as he says, it doesn't make sense to the people of Matatu industry. Does this make sense to you? I don't know what, what who I am if I'm not talking about Matatu as a Matatu person. I think what Medo should have talked about is proper communication to the users of this service. Okay. This is a dedicated lane for public transport. It's meant eventually to graduate itself to mass transit. We don't have any units yet. Okay. If you mark this road and there's nobody using it, we are, our biggest fleet is 51 than majority 33. Mm. So I believe that these are lanes dedicated for those passes which are available now. We will upgrade ourselves. We have already made prepared ourselves. When 14 seater was talked about initially to upgrade ourselves to a 33 seater, oh, that was then the, 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 the high occupancy. We got prepared. Mm. And I've told my members who are the majority in this country and this city that we need to prepare ourselves and have been given the go-ahead to even source for uh, buses that will upgrade from where we are. What we would want to emphasize on is as for now because people have invested heavily mm -hmm. in the 33 seaters, the 51 seaters, they have to use it. What should happen is that maybe stop licensing 33 seater and as it goes down we get upgraded. Okay. Because already we have invested billions in what we have as units today. But it's a very good idea. We will not stop technology. And this country needs to upgrade itself. You go to, I went to South Africa to study their mass rapid transit. It's different from what we're having. Because that one is a dedicated lane and uh, 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 eventually it has to have, uh, f to be fed because it's only dedicated, there's no way any other vehicle can come in. Mm -hmm. For now, it's an ignition okay. to be able to propel ourselves in future. But we don't forget that we have existing units which are there now that needs even to use that one to encourage us now. And we see, we mix it up because we've got to graduate ourselves eventually. And then now is when we'll know, people will understand that this one has better revenue than the other one. It's even from the industry perspective. Yeah, okay. that's, that's, that's our position as investors. And that's something that Methu will uh, be able to respond to and jump in where you feel the need to, of course, respectfully. Um, Bonacap, this isn't the first time we're seeing this happen, at least global standards. In what we've seen play out internationally in, in the standards that would work, um, what has been, what's the reality? Is this phasing out of the small capacity vehicles because that's what we, it seems that we're hiding from the truth but, or the eventuality. Is this what has happened in other uh, democracies where they've introduced this kind of? Uh, one of the most successful uh, BRTs that we've seen um, among the most successful is uh, Bogota and uh, Curitiba uh, in Brazil. Quite, it's, it tends to be a bit quite popular in, in South American countries and has slowly been building up in, in the West and in African countries. And Bogota was a very interesting story because it was a similar story to the Kenyan scenario where we had what we con uh, the public, current public transport system, what we, we tend to call it paratransit in uh, academic terms, where it's uh, different owners, uh, different routes that, like we have with our Matatu and, and the current bus system. And what happened is that they integrated them into the system. The owners were integrated into the system such that they ended up being uh, shareholders mm -hmm. uh, within, within the system, which is very important because uh, you can't just impose uh, infrastructure and assume that it will work. Mm -hmm. I always say, like from a, from a city's perspective, a city comprises of people, uh, the, and these people are we, the passengers. Okay, they are the drivers, they are the conductors, they are the mechanics who repair. There's a, there's a whole industry that comes with urban urban mobility. So there has to be a way in which you plan to integrate the, the existing system into what what uh, we, we are trying to attain. Yes. And that may take time, okay? It's not uh, an overnight uh, 
activity. It's something that, that takes time, that requires structures to be, to be set up alongside the studies. And it, because it's not easy. You're looking at how to develop roots, and you're mm -hmm. also looking at how to integrate people in into this, uh, people with different interests into yes. this particular system. Yes. Um, some systems have developed such that you have a BRT corridor and then you have other vehicles feeding into the BRT. Like okay. even for private vehicles? Um, like the, the Curitiba system, for instance, has uh, BRT, uh, smaller vehicles feeding into the system, but it's, it's, it's a, that's a well-developed BRT system such that people board those vehicles free of charge and then when they get to the stations, that's when they pay to access the main, the main corridor. Mm -hmm. Alongside this also comes land use management, okay, so, such that you have what we call transit-oriented development, where we densify land use around the main transport corridors so that we can reduce the need for long-distance travel. Okay. Okay, we have kind of mixed land use but more dense land use along main transport corridors so, so that we're not going deep, say, to say, use Thika Road as an example. If we're saying uh, around Kahawa, we're not going deep into Kahawa. People are living closer to the, the, the main the main the main corridors. Mm -hmm. We've also had areas where BRT systems have failed. For instance, it, a good example was the failure in Delhi, and uh, among the reasons were, first of all, they didn't uh, integrate the stations uh, very well. They simply demarcated the road without integrating proper BRT stations for good access. Um, also, the location of the station has to be related to uh, land. You can't simply say we will do stations say every 400 meters, and you find that there's more intense land use in between. Okay. And, peop and uh, you, we know it even from our use of matatus. We prefer stopping to the near, as near near to our destination as yes. as possible. They also didn't have a very good fleet management plan, which is critical. I think the people from the industry can tell you more more about uh, how how they manage their fleet. Um, access facilities. We've seen uh, the the paint on the road on Thika Road being done in the middle. Okay. Now that is bec uh, one feature that comes with several BRTs. We use the median uh, carriageway. Mm -hmm. The reason why we use that is so that we don't have interference from at junctions and uh, from curbside parking. But then but with the marking, and if my director can show it, the marking, yeah. and uh, Bonamedu even brought it up, uh, you wonder where people will, exactly. will get off. Exactly. My there has to be proper, access for s proper safe and adequate access facilities for okay. people to access the station and from first of all the station has to exist we've not seen any stations in spite of this median uh, lane being being mapped so there has to be a proper uh, station built there and then there has to be safe access remember this is we're talking of Thika road we're talking of mombasa road mm -hmm. these are three lane four lane highways okay we have to be sure that children of as young as five years old can e access that station because one of the aims of these new systems is so that they can be used by as many people as possible. Okay. The other uh, thing that's important is continuous monitoring and evaluation. We have not, I cannot judge on what the ministry has, has decided or what NAMAT has decided, but there has to also be a constant plan of monitoring and yes. evaluation. And that's what we've even, we've even started from when they announced it's going to be implemented. Bonamethu, uh, CAP brings up the issue of integration, especially for those who are the stakeholders. And you're, you, you say you, you represent uh, over 15,000 uh, matatus within the city. And... Uh, how do you feel adequately integrated in this new implementation? Uh, one, uh, I would say that uh, I cannot say that I was integrated because I just saw people marking the road. You as a representative of Uba? In fact, I even went there because I just over it, uh, heard it uh, from my other source that the Rika road is being marked for BRT. I could not believe it until I went there with my chairman. I think you have seen him there saying that uh, Matatu does not create the jam. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy the way my, our colleague here is uh, trying to explain about the BRT. And you can see my point of argument when I was here the last time. I was saying that uh, this thing has been rushed for nothing. Okay. Would have taken time and get those things like what our friend is saying here. Instead of uh, rushing and start marking the road, we don't have those stations he's talking about. Of course we need them. If we want to go to the, to the technology, we must involve all the technology as, uh, aspects, mm -hmm. but we cannot just there start marking the road. I think uh, there is somewhere we are missing something. Okay. And I told you last time, this is not the first time that uh, Kenyan government has been using resources, and at the end of the day, it becomes to waste. And this one I told you for free, if they are not going to change it the way they are doing it. I'm wondering, Mr. Kimta is telling us uh, it's a good idea. It's a good idea, yes. 
But who is implementing this? And you could perhaps explain this who because is you the, say uh, you have been in talks. Who is implementing this? I think the last time I, I mentioned in Banakimta here, and I'm sorry because you are not in the panel, but Next time I was mentioning you mouth. because I can see you have a lot of interest in that. That's why I was mentioning you because me, I have been a member to Kimtai's uh, association. That's where I came from when we formed the association of Matato operators. So I know Mr. Kimtai. He can do anything when he wants to do it perfectly. But on this particular issue, when Kimtai will tell you for free, it is not done properly and it's not going anywhere if it is not changed the way it's being done. Yes. That is my Maybe, observation uh, and the observation of my, my, my association. Again, uh, Buana Mark Masai will tell you, Association of Matato Operator doesn't not, uh, does not represent 15,000 Matatos. Yes, you could clarify. In total, we have about 17,000 Matatos in Nairobi. Association of Matato Operators represent about 130 membership of the circles and companies. Kimtai House also some. That's how we, we, we come you up. You say some. He'll, he'll give us the numbers. Anyway, we don't want to go into <laughs> yes, numbers. Yeah. No, but just we to are, appreciate yeah, so who you competing. represent. We are not competing. He knows very well. Yes. Matato Owners Association has structures in this country. Matatu Honors Association has offices, has com uh, it has uh, a secretariat, it has lawyers, mm -hmm. it has all the structures required to be able to drive representation. And I think I want to end it there because we can't grumble about membership. Uh -huh. I just want to say that we uh, uh, command uh, a bigger, uh, the biggest in the city. Okay. And that I don't want to go into numbers because right. numbers at times when it's not put correctly, it's not done well. Just Maybe. Let, let me hold you on that. Uh, if, you, if you don't want to go into the numbers, because my director tells me I have to, this is our bus stop. We have to take a break. Tushuke kidogo, alafu tutapanda tuendele na safari. And welcome back to Press Pass. Uh, before we took the break, though, the issues that were being put uh, on the table in terms of uh, the perspective uh, that you have of this project, from what I hear and from what you've said in previous uh, interviews from other stations that I've, I've personally watched and the Kenyan has watched as well, this seems to be something that you are embracing and that you've prepared yourself for. Over how long has this been in the works, uh, especially from MOA perspective? He says he thinks it's being rushed, but there's been works uh, behind the scenes. What I want to put very clear here is that uh, I'm on record saying public transport, whatever, however, brands or new methods of doing the business is good to be run by those people who are already in the business. Okay. And I just want to put it very clearly. There are no mass transit or, or bus rapid transit units in the country. Yet. And how long is it going to take? Our, it would be better. You know, one thing is that when we think of upgrading ourselves in public transport, the best thing is to engage the government. We would like those dedicated lanes now to be used by the matatus that are existing. It doesn't have to be BRT, there is no infrastructure. Mm. He's put it very well. We don't have what it takes to be to, to have BRT. But it could be a name, a code that has been given. Okay. But we can still again for 33 seaters to use it. And that will mean slowly phasing out 14 seater? 14 seater actually has been phased out, I would say. Okay. For the city is only applicable to those traveling long distance. But for urban transport, there's, it, it's, they stopped licensing them, new, from a long time ago. Okay. That you, if this one becomes a ramshackle, you get rid of it. Okay. So there is, but you can't replace it by bringing in a new one. But if it's still in good shape, it will be inspected and it will be allowed to come to, uh, to, mm -hmm. to, to, to give service. Mm -hmm. But for mass rapid transit, has got to be the same. You know, it's, there is no otherwise, because how long is it going to take us to replace close to 20,000 buses in this, Matatus in this, in this town? Mm -hmm. It will take some time. So this is gradual. And I believe uh, that um, if you can be able to, I mean, the government should be in a position to execute the same. Where would it take these buses that are already are in existence, the 33 seaters and so forth? So I think it's very clear. Even when they were, uh, the markings were being done, I'm sure the reason why it was not, not the KY, KWS. KWS, those, are, those buses are not meant for urban transport. 
NYS, you mean? NYS. Yes. They are NYS. not meant for urban transport. And that's something else we'll talk about. Uh, th that is, uh, I think... Uh, They're high capacity. Some yeah, high capacity, actually... yes. But somehow, um, uh, they, they, uh, I don't think uh, they can do that work in the city. All right. And it, you, it, 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 well, anyway, let and me you tell us, because we have that report and you actually appeared before the Senate yeah. and you had your, your part to say about this. But yeah. to respond to one of the questions here about, you know, benchmarking, whether you've seen, you visited to see if this is working elsewhere uh, from the perspective of MOA. Yeah. I, I, Just to respond to him saying uh, this is rushed. Uh, you know, a journey has got to start without even single step. For us to look at it, how do we weigh? Once, what should happen here is that we must embrace it and give it a chance to be able to prove that this is much better than what we have. Okay. So, and in doing so, we, I mean, the, the operators are not supposed to be pushed aside. Integrated, as he said. Yeah, it has to be integrated. Because anyway, it's not a, I mean, it's a, it's not a real BRT as, 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 as uh, according it's to the standards. It isn't. So I believe that... Um, uh, the best thing is to give it a chance, we support it, and then we own the process, and then we invest in the same. Okay. I know there are so many interests in public transport. Let me tell you, to be very honest, there are those people who want to manage the buses, and when they see BRT coming in, they fear that we will not get the revenues. You know, they, in this country, there are very many busybodies. Mm -hmm. There are bodies which don't have buses, they just want to manage. BRT is going to push them aside. These are people who are gaining from those who have invested. Okay. And in BRT, there's not going to be any chance. A system is going to be put in place. We'll have all our, our members registering in a, position, in a central position where we will have a command center. The vehicles will be managed from one position. And the vehicles will be run by an institution of pro professionals. My members' work would be to receive the revenues. Okay. So that's, that's the concept. So we get away from micromanaging. I can have one bus and I become the managing director of the scene. would rather have corporate entities that would be able to deliver this. All right. And you speak of the system that would work. Uh, and would this uh, include uh, people like the operators, the association of the uh, Matatu operators? Because here it sounds a lot like it will be, and, and he's mentioned it, they're those who have interest and stakes, and it's as if they feel left out. Are you, are you saying we'd, we'd see nobody people like the operators? Going to, as long as you are an investor, you'll not be left out. Okay. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, if, if I've invested in public transport, I can miss out because there's a system and structures that have been put in place that will make me benefit as an investor. All right. And, and you said... This was last week when we spoke, and uh, you've said it before that you were not, you know, consulted. He represents Matatu Owners Association. He has, and he says they have structures under their organization and uh, many people that they represent. And they have been in consultations as we continue gradually. As he says, the journey starts with one step. Why do you feel as the operators, uh, as the association of operators, you have not been consulted? And what would it take to make you get there to that place where you would say we wholeheartedly embrace this? Uh, thank you. Uh, maybe uh, I, would, uh, I would like to answer Bwana Kimtai. Okay. Because uh, to have more than one association is always good. Suppose you tell me you want to build a house. And I know always how it starts with the foundation. And then you start from the roof. I don't have a right to ask why the house being started from the roof. Mm -hmm. I think I have a right. And that's what I want to tell you, Mr. Kimtai, that uh, when we were told to move from 14-seater to 33-seater, there was no war. And we were doing it as circles and companies upgrading from 14 to 33 and above. But my big concern here, uh, Mr. Kinka is telling us that uh, they will include everybody. To me, that is not true. Because so? one reason why I'm not, it is not true, even Kimtai's member themselves, most of them don't know where, where those, is, those buses are coming from, where are they going, when are they getting them. How do you expect a member of association of Matato operators to know if, if even Mr. Kimtai's members doesn't know? 
And, and again, about, you're talking about the 50 buses that will be first procured? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because if Kim Tai was given 50 buses, as yeah. the min, uh, if the minister told us, or you bought, let's use the word, you bought 50 buses, why was it not any other company or association to be involved in those arrangements? Are we going towards Kim Tai bringing 50 buses and then he gives the people he feels that he can give them? This is Kenya. Is that the case? Kenya, now, we let, are let feeling. Me, let me correct this. Let me correct him, and then you let can Let me jump. correct him. When he talks of 50 buses given, let me put, set the record straight. I have sourced for buses for my members. Every SACO that is a member of Matatu Owners Association will get it. And they will have it. Only that the branding will be MOA. Okay. But the ownership belongs to members. If you're not a member, sorry. I mean, you'll have to find out. I'm not given. You, I mean, if I've gone to negotiate for a loan, why do I have to negotiate on behalf of your association? That's right. Why don't, why don't you go ahead and do it yourself? I'll do so, it. So um, um, it, it's all about, you know, one thing is that it's good to put things straight and come out with what. You don't talk if you don't have facts. Put it straight. If it's about buses that we are bringing in, there's nothing wrong. You can as well go out and bring buses. I've negotiated for buses. I've not brought any buses in. Yes. I've negotiated. I've negotiated for finance. Today I've had a, 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 a meeting with the Exim Bank. So we are trying to have a package way of doing it. Mm -hmm. But it's, we also got to be cautious because we've already invested. I have buses myself. I have very many 33 sitters in both Starbucks and Compliant. I'm not complaining because I'm seeing value. So I'm educating my members, this is not a monster, this is yours. Yes. So they have to invest. It doesn't just come. It's not only dishing out. You have to pay for it. And the benefit of negotiation, all of it is passed over to the, to the member. So this should not be uh, put that Kimutai is bringing himself some buses. No. This is MOA affair. It's meant for the people. And, it's and we, we would want to even have um, the other people who would want to have the same they can come and we show them the method. It's so simple. It's so simple. It's all about finance. And if whether you're interested in getting a bus, just tell me. I'll show you where to get them. I'll show you whom to finance them for you. Uh, As opposed to fighting, you know, fighting, you know, the, the, the whole thing. It's not meant to destroy other people. It's meant to make transport better for this country. Mr. Cap wants to bring in a point uh, on this yeah, what's, issue. What, what's coming out clearly um, is the absence of any communication, uh, communication strategy in this whole project. Um, one of the things we have in uh, urban general urban transportation uh, studies and transportation mm -hmm. uh, uh, management is that alongside the project has to come a thorough communication uh, strategy that covers uh, operators, that covers um, regulators, that covers uh, commuters, that covers uh, other stakeholders, even uh, pa uh, personal car uh, drivers, so that they know what's happening. But what we've seen the last one week is, in fact, we've got to understand, just by looking even at social media, that Kenyans do not know anything mm -hmm. about BRT, about busways. Um, Ke Kenyans are, are curious. They want to know what, what is happening. And I would say that the sudden news shot that uh, BRT is being implement, implemented yes. took people by surprise. Now, it's not something that I would say came suddenly, because it's something that those of us who are in this sector of uh, urban transport and uh, urbanization had known about, but we didn't know it was going to come uh, surprisingly. We had already seen the Namata bill. We'd, uh, Parliament had asked for views on it. People mm -hmm. had sent their views. We had even seen some of the proposed lanes. There was uh, the Simba, Simba Lane, Thika uh, Road to Langata. There was Ndovu, Chui, Kifar, the different lanes that uh, Namata had already uh, given out. Mm -hmm. But from there, beside that map that even if you is available online, from there there was really no outreach, uh, public outreach on what on what is going on. And that's why uh, many, when we suddenly had a minister, that the minister is on the road, uh, cabinet secretary is on the road uh, putting paint and a busway, suddenly, and, and I understand where the, the two gentlemen are coming from. One maybe was in the know-how, and the other one was not in the know-how. Or one maybe knew more than the other. Mm -hmm. So I would go back and, and tell the, the, the ministry, just come out clean to all of us. Because even us as urban uh, planners and professionals, I mean, we've, we've been looking forward to this. Today morning, I was looking at a 1986 study into urban transit of Nairobi, where they were talking about busways, light rail, and, and different modes. This is way back in, uh, over, over 30 years ago. Yes. And then we've also had uh, strategies of, uh, by, I think, an Indian consultancy that talked about light rail tran transit routes within 
the city of Nairobi. Then we've had other World Bank proposals. We've had very many proposals happening over time. But mm -hmm. now, um, last year we got to see these uh, Namata proposals, and then there was sudden silence. We didn't get to hear anything after that yes. till last week when we suddenly saw, um, you know, BRT lanes are, are being put. As it has been said, we have to move forward. There's, there's no discussion that um, uh, we, 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 we cannot run away from the fact that we need to start thinking about our access and, and uh, mobility in the city of Nairobi. It is inevitable. It, it is inevitable because where we are now, even, we're already at a very critical point where you cannot you can't predict how you're moving from one place to another. Um, we cannot send our children on, on, on public transit. We're very, we're very scared. We, we had uh, stories of uh, ladies being harassed in some, some yes. buses, uh, I think, two years ago, and we still get to hear such stories. Um, we, we see what happens whenever it's holiday season. So there has to be that. It's true we have to take that shift at one point in time. Mm -hmm. This maybe is our first step. It's still a learning process. It's still, we're still asking ourselves, how should we move now? Yes. How should we move ahead? And I guess even some of these discussions are part of that learning process. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we, how, how should the, the ministry, it's sad that they're not here with us. How should they bring out this information to us? Um, all this data they've been collecting way back from 1986 till, till now. Um, we can even go back, I think there was 1982 PWC study into a model Matatu, uh, Matatu vehicle. Mm -hmm. You know, all sorts of studies that have been done. Where, where is all this data? Such that it can be looked, we can look at it and say, this is how they've come to this particular conclusion. Because let's, let's rem re remind ourselves, BRT is, on, is one means of public transit. Okay? It works well in areas where we have up to 6,000 people uh, per, per hour per direction. Um, it may not work well where we have much more intense land use, where mm. we don't have enough uh, channels for, for them to pass. We have, eventually, we will also have to upgrade in some places to, towards thinking about uh, uh, metro rail, for mm. instance. In Bogota now, in some places, some areas, the BIT has already been over, overused. We may also have to move towards aerial cabin transit in some places where it's maybe extreme intense land use. And, uh, yes. and we want to now move above, above the surface of... of uh, of, of the earth, such that we don't interfere with, we don't have to start talking about land reclamation and mm -hmm. such things. But the discussion has to begin at one point in time. Yes. And I guess it, we should be happy that it has been And it happy. has been prompted by yeah. this. And Bonamethu, now you can respond to that issue you brought up initially. And uh, Bonakimutai says he actually procured through the procedures for his members. And this is something you can do as well. So is this a thing of you feeling left out? Are you able to do the same? Uh, one, I want to tell Kimita is my senior chairman of my MOA, and I respect him. But uh, as I've been saying this several times, let's not do things behind the curtain. Why should I go and ask Kimita where to buy a bus, where to get finance? Is the government is not able? to give that one and put it either in Kenya Gazette or anywhere that if you want to acquire buses, follow this procedure. Why should I go to Kim Tai for him to tell me how to get a bus? I am not his member anyway. He has his own members. I have my own members. There are so many other associations who want their members to get those buses. Mm -hmm. Is it really wise for me to go and beg Mr. Kim Tai to tell me where to get the bus, how to be financed? I think that is what I told you last time. That's the punity of the highest order. But you look at it as... Impunity of the highest order. Because if we would have, they have this information from the word go, maybe my, my association would have actually procured maybe five if we are not able to procure 50 like uh, my brother came to. Yes. But since we didn't have information... When did you first hear about this? In fact, let me tell you, uh, if I become very frank, even when I was a member of Bana Kimtai here, we used to participate in a meeting with the people called them uh, Ashok Lelands. And we were talking about those buses that time. Yes. We were talking about them. We were so talking you knew. about them. You say you knew we about knew they are there, but we never reached to a point when those buses will be coming to this country. You never reached or you didn't we want to We never concluded that. that issue. Okay. We never. But now, what I'm seeing here, it's as if the government is only playing the game with the Bonakim Tai. That's why he acquired 50, while others are having zero, which is very, very bad to us, anyway. Just clarify on and this I, I can tell And I can tell Bonakim Tai, that road was marked for BRT only. And Kim Tai is very much aware 
that there are 17,000 matatos in the city. How would he agree such a thing to be wrote on the, on the road? Uh, Everybody is reading when he's passing on. How many people does have BRT in this country? I think, uh, I think my, my, my chairman would have started is mark the lane for matatos so that we see whether we can reduce this jam. But and, when you, and, he's, and he's actually alluded to it by saying think, the 33 But when you mark the road using. and say for BRT only, I was shocked. I was shocked. Let, okay, let, let him respond. Let, let, me, let me say one thing. Is that, uh, method, I think you focus your mind in one area, you don't want to shift it. I've talked about we, can, we want to engage the government to allow us to use that lane because there are no BRT buses. To allow, when you say allow us, you mean uh, matatus? Matatus, yeah. So we have, I think uh, his chairman has alluded there that uh, traffic snarl-ups are brought about by personal vehicles. I understand because uh, maybe the way uh, uh, it's structured is not well. And we all get lumped up in the same traffic jam. So it would be very easy for these people to leave their v personal vehicles at home, hop into a matatu and expressway if it was get to efficient. the city. Yes. Yeah, it can be efficient. You know what happens is public transport has been... Matatus, have, they've been queuing with saloon cars, which are so many. That's why you see them cutting, because they have 33 passengers while you're driving your one. So the, 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 the mind here switches that, no, this guy does not deserve to be ahead of me. That's their minds. So I think what, what should happen here, I think Medu should, uh, we should read from the same text. I'm not in the government. I don't, I don't, I, I'm just in the association. Uh, I remember very well. Medu was with me when we presented the first bus last year in Akuru. He was there. And we asked our members, this is where we want to go to. He was there. He said yes. So it's not a surprise. It's not a surprise. One thing is that maybe the marking of the road could have surprised us because already what we were preparing for was full-time BRT. Mm. But this one is not BRT. As uh, the expert has said it here, this is just a mass transit lane, a, a lane that has been set aside for mass transit. In Nairobi today, mass transit is 33 seater. I mean, that's, that's the reality. That is what is practical. Yes. And this is what I'm saying. Unfortunately, Medo has set up his mind not to understand what I'm saying. We want 33 seaters to use that. that is, those are the only units which are there carrying mass. Which brings us to the issue. Has, has, have the rules been gazetted? Nothing has been done so far. Okay. And he has put it very well. The Ministry of Transport is very poor in communicating. I, I didn't know, I was in Kericho when uh, they, were, they were marking the road. Somebody was telling me, hey, yes. the roads are being marked for BRT. And then I said, this is a big joke because BRT initially, what we understand by BRT is all about uh, putting in proper infrastructure, which I knew that it would take us many years to complete because it's not easy because you have to dedicate one lane permanently. But this one now is about the mass that is there. We would want to graduate ourselves there eventually. Yes. We, the 33 seaters, can use that lane. Then if I am able to get for my members the 50 buses, each, 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 each circle, maybe one, 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 then we would see, we would be able to win and say, oh, this is much better. Economies of scale. Just to clarify, MOA is not boxing out any other No, 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 no. And he knows very well what kind of a person I am. I'm not in competition with any association. I'm in record on that. I would want a successful public transport system in Nairobi. Okay. And everybody inclusive. Because anyway, when we come to do business, what we are looking for at the end are the profits that we are supposed to make. Yes. We're looking and for efficiency. We are and we are looking for efficiency. We want, you know, for a very long time we've had a uh, uh, name calling. I mean, matatu, as, um, as matatus are associated with to very many bad things. But this time, we want to clean it up. Industry. Oh, yeah. They will yes. call it all names. But I just want to tell me, there is not, no, no dagger kept behind here. None at all. Because when we, I, I, I visited the plant, it's in the government which sponsored me to go and visit. I'm not in, you know, the government is only seeing that I'm being reasonable. Yes. This is what we want. In fact, initiative. I brought this initiative uh, Early last year, Medu was, I even presented that bus. How long does it take us? It's, it can't take us more than two years to think of how to do it. And prepare financially. Yeah. I yes. just want to use one, this before we take a break, uh, yes. one example um, from New York City. Um, 
couple of years back, about a decade ago, uh, New York and uh, Mayor Bloomberg came up with this whole concept of bus lanes. And, we, and New York is a city that's had uh, a metro rail for, for, for years, for decades. Yes. But now they started shifting towards using bus lanes. And it was not, again, a mega project. Uh, the then head of Department of Transportation, Janet Sadiq Khan, actually moved kind of like in the direction we're taking. Okay? Used the current op the operators at the time on one particular channel, segregated the, the road by simply marking it out. Mm -hmm. No major infrastructure. Um, found it, uh, try, try, trial and error, typical trial and, trial, trial and error. So you try out on this lane, on this particular channel, it works, you add another one and you build up. So we cannot, um, we cannot exclude the fact that we should, we, since we don't have those buses, there's yes. no reason why we can't start thinking about using our, what we our have colleagues existing. here, our existing infrastructure, I mean our existing vehicles, and giving them dedicated, dedicated lanes. Yes. However, th we know the way um, paratransit tends to operate. It not, uh, doesn't follow set schedules and timings and, and such. So there will be necessity for them to have their own f forms of regulation, yes. such that we don't end up now with accumulation within those lanes. But there's also always order. possible. There has to be some form of order. Otherwise, you, you'll end up, obviously, with chaos. But I don't see why we can't start thinking if we don't have anything ready. If why 50, can't we start thinking like that? capacity, yeah. Yeah. quick, why and then yeah. I want to make uh, What to I want to put here very straight is that uh, whether names bus rapid transit or any other name that would come by, the logic here is to have people arriving at their destination within the shortest time possible and in structured, uh, I mean, in, 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 in a way that is acceptable. Um, what I want to put very clear is that uh, we don't have units, and the reason why I've bent towards it, we don't want to see Chinese coming in to do this business. We don't want to see any other people apart from us. Okay. And when we stay away so much, that gap will be filled by something. That vacuum will be filled by something. So I just want to tell my friends here, what we need to do is to run with it. We don't, we, we ask for these lanes. Meanwhile, we use our 33 seaters. We will upgrade. We're going to buy these buses. And we have the buses. Yes. And, and that's, that's the way to go. Bonometi, Otherwise, you'll see Chinese doing yeah. this work. Yeah. Bonometi, you did tell me you, you do have 33 uh, seater buses, 50 uh, yeah, seater yeah. buses. And uh, if I they have, allow them I, with these special I, lanes. Uh, Bonamark, I have all the categories of buses from 14 seater to 51 seater. I have all of them. Uh, what I want to say here. I'm happy that uh, Mr. Kimtai has already agreed here that the lane is going to be used by that three-seater. Should be. He says right? proposed. Yeah. Is that right, Mr. Kimtai? This is what I've proposed. Yes, not proposed. You have agreed. No, because I'm, already I'm the lane the, is I'm marked. The, I'm the, I'm because the, the road is already marked, Bwana yes. Masai, I don't want Kimtai to say tomorrow that he proposed. You know, a proposal can be denied. Or, right. Right? The other thing I want to tell my friend Kimtai, I respect you so much, Bwana Kimtai, but... There is somewhere that I'm missing the point from you. We were with you when we were bringing those buses for people to see. We were seeing the buses, how they have been made, how people will be bonding it, what are the other maybe things are missing in the bus. But we never reached to a point of saying, let's go now and buy the buses. But, but, the but the point that you're, you're bringing a concept <laughs> yeah, to be yeah, shown, yeah, but, aren't you really being prepared for what, it? What did he... me, me, I want to tell something, Medu, that this is not getting right. Medu, all along, I remember I told everybody, I'm going to negotiate for waiver of duty. Mm. For a very long time, I have written letters and waited for it to happen. It only happened about two and a half weeks ago. What is that? That is a gun now. Pew. We are on our set. That we go. have gained that, that, that we don't know whether they'll say no, stop it. So I think Medu should get it right. That we need to get, uh, to, 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 to get things on its way. Then every time, you know, you, you, you want, yeah, so, so I've negotiated for duty to be removed. You should ask, be asking me now how much that has bus cost. Don't let Kim Tai cut me again. Okay. Please, let me finish. All right. You pointed yeah, at me seriously. I'll let you finish my your point. Chairman, yes. I cannot be able to cut him, but don't allow him to cut me. All again. right. He did good because we were promised that uh, he told the president. I remember there was uh, an ATM for Moa, and that's where he brought that issue. 
because he's the person who addressed the head of the state. And he told us that he's going to request the president to remove the duty from those buses. I agree on those things, Bwana Kimutai. But what has come now on implementation side, that's where I totally disagree. Because if you knew that now you are going to procure the buses, in fact, you would have you would have even called other people, matatu operators in Nairobi, and tell them we are going for this. Please prepare yourself. Okay. But you cannot just prepare ourselves when you have already procured your 50 buses. You have them in your pocket. This but is when the, you are telling me to go and procure. I will procure. Yes. Yes. But my big question here is, if Kimtai was for us, he would have actually even give, 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 uh, given us a hint. What is happening? Yeah. He's now telling me that if I want to you know... You want my member, why should I talk to you? I've had That's no where I'm coming. Okay, now, That's we, where see, I'm coming now we see what... Because what is, if what somebody is, is not a member of Bwana Kimtai, he's going to suffer. Okay. He's the guy who is going to be thrown out of business because Kimtai cannot represent him. But Bwana Methu But now, here, yes. we talk about matatu operators in Nairobi. Whatever association they belong. But there's a time that we play ball on one side without saying this is Kimtai, this is... And sometimes I like the way he handles things. But this one, on this particular I have a lot of quite... doubt, my chairman, that you handled it in a very way and in a very transparent way. Okay. I really doubt you up to now. All right, let, let's let's hold that doubt on that point because I need to take another break. Uh, uh, there's what we have been introduced to as a BRT in this past week in the reportage, and as we've seen from the discussion, it is not technically the uh, you know global standards of the BRT. This is just dedicating one lane in uh, some of the major highways within the city uh, to the buses and to PSVs. And uh, there are some issues and dynamics that are coming out, and I hope you appreciate what is uh, hopefully something that will inform the implementation as Bwana Matthew keeps on uh, uh, mentioning and also uh, Bwana uh, Kim Tai says it is going to be uh, part of it but uh, there is also uh, what has worked and what hasn't worked and we'll see some of the pictures but you mentioned when you agree and when you're on one side on this particular story you were in this past week and this was when of course this was on the NYS buses the the two separate issues yes it is uh, in the name of decongesting the city but they're two separate issues and we want to understand why there's an issue with the NYS buses particularly in uh, the name of decongesting our city National Youth Service buses have formally received the backing of major state agencies and will remain operational in Nairobi County despite opposition from the Matatu Owners Association. Key players in the transport sector appeared before the Senate Committee in charge of roads led by its chairman, Senator Kimani Wamatangi, at County Hall. County governments have a budget for that function, but then they get overwhelmed by, for example, rubbish and we come in. So there's a still, and that really defines the reason why we are in transport now, but we are not back to the slum areas because the county governments still have a budget for cleaning of the slum areas. Public Service Cabinet Secretary Professor Margaret Kobia also announced that the government will soon launch affordable ultra-modern metro transit buses that will have reserved lanes in order to ease congestion in Nairobi CBD. Because it's also buses government concern for its citizens. Here, we also need to ask ourselves, why do government exist? And we know government exists to provide for the common good, especially for the lowest level. But this is already sending shivers down the spine of the Matatu Owners Association. Its chairman, Simon Kimutai, says the introduction of both the NYS and Metro Transit buses into the lucrative industry does not offer a fair competition in the industry. There must be that coordination that why should you come to the road while armed, while you are uh, uh, practicing things which are not right. The Senate, which will issue a detailed report on the matter, wants all stakeholders to hold a consultative meeting with the hope of settling some of the grievances aired. And especially as we move forward to... Uh, changing uh, the, the, the environment of transport uh, countrywide and in the city especially with the introduction of uh, modern systems like uh, uh, the mass transport system, the vehicles that uh, uh, Kimutai had said they wanted to, to import with his association uh, specifically for, for urban transport. Uh, those kind of inter interventions would help this country uh, and, and help our people uh, to, to, to live a better life. 
So I brought that up just to separate the issues because to the Mwananchi NYS bus, which is coming with a cheaper rate and is also high capacity, so to decongest, uh, someone would say that. Um, what is the protestation here? Um, Mark, you know, in business doing, if other people come in and start undercutting, we don't fear competition at any moment. The NYS has come in and he's saying he's going to give a ride for 20 shillings. It's not sustainable. It can make the bus move, it cannot pay the driver, it cannot repair this vehicle. It, can, it does completely nothing. By the end of the day... But to the Kenyan, he gets to his destination if, uh, at a cheaper rate. I, I, I've seen like it's... Uh, um, I don't know what the government wants to, to do. Does it want to destroy uh, the existing uh, uh, business done by Kenyans who have invested lots of money? Because when you say you're going to charge 20 shillings, uh, for me, I would say uh, that is, uh, if they insist on bringing in more buses, they would be getting money from our taxes, remove that money to go and sustain that business, mm -hmm. which of course is, uh, is terrible. While we have existing structures and systems by people who have invested heavily. So, so I, I, I think, I don't know whether it's a provo uh, they're trying to provoke us into going to uh, bus rapid transit because it is, uh, and on the other side I say, if they wanted to give free transport, take this bus to Kibara, drop people in town, don't charge them the 20 hills because it's not going to do anything. So, um, uh, and uh, um, uh, I wonder whether the taxes that we do pay, they're not compliant with uh, some section of NTSA, but like for instance, these things are not insured. Mm. I mean, they, they are risking passengers, and so they're not sure at the first place. Number two is that these are not the prescribed units to be used in public transport in an urban setup. If you look at any other uh, 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 transport systems in the world that are successful, those buses are not meant for that. Or I came to learn that these buses are old buses that were lying in youth service, that they were bringing in to help people during rainy season. If you would play the whole clip, yeah. they'll tell you that uh, we were bringing in to rescue people from you know, uh, congestion, uh, of, of getting this, so many people in a bus stop, and it has rained, and uh, they would want to help them. That was the initial concept. But I still don't understand what it's all about. OK, Buona Methu, uh, just to be fair, and then you give us an example of whether, as an urban planner, the government has ever, any other government uh, you know, in, in economies that have worked, has uh, bring in, brought in uh, an intervention such as this. Buona Methu, what's your opinion on uh, the NYS buses? It is in the name of decongesting the city and bringing more affordable services to the Nairobi. Uh, in fact, uh, what I would say on the NYS buses, as Banakimta is saying, maybe whoever was planning that he was intending to provoke matatus. Because when you bring the buses in, you start charging 20 shillings in the name of that you are helping Wananchi. That's pure lies. B it is somebody but who wants to. Wananchi will tell you, I'm actually. Yeah, it's okay. Even, even today, like when we have new buses, we normally say let them take people to make it for free. Three things in Kenya are really welcomed anywhere. So if you tell people to charge them even 10 shillings, they will be very happy because that is a cut of expenses. So what I want to say here, these people are trying to provoke us, but it was in the wrong time to provoke us because they brought in the buses with a GK number plate. We would not fight with the government, but we are still weighing the situation because, again, we cannot agree our own government to beat us up to the corner while we are watching. Right. Please remember, all that three seaters and uh, 51 and all these, all those buses except uh, 14 seaters, most of them are on loan. But you can see what they are doing in the name of helping one. And it's totally nothing. Because me, I, 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 was, I was thinking the other day, if the person who was planning this, there is a time that uh, uh, night travel license was cancelled. People slept in the bush. Because Matato cannot operate at night. Where was this guy that time? He would not release those NY buses, to go help. and take those people home. Instead of small uh, children, women sleeping outside in the in, in, Is it a coincidence cold? As, as a stakeholder, and you could probably respond to this, that they came up a few weeks just before the lanes were introduced. Is it a coincidence? I, I, I would call it a coincidence because whoever is playing this game is playing from a distance. 
and he's actually playing one card after the other. One card after the other. Because he brought in the NYS buses, then he later he has started marking the road without even being gazetted. Right. Uh, can you put away that this guy is not provoking Matato people? There's something that he's looking for. But we don't know who is this person. Maybe my chairman, Bonakimta, he might know. Because <laughs> sometimes he discusses with these people things behind our no. back. But to me, and I told you last time when I was here, there's a problem coming in this country about Matatu people. Because uh, Kimtai knows Matatu people. They are very good when they decide to be good. But when they decide to be bad, even me as the spokesman of Matatu, Association of Matatu Operators, even Kimtai himself, they become so bad to him. All right, I'll give him an opportunity to speak. Uh, when a cap has been quiet for a bit, um, do you th first of all, Yes, you, give, you can give your professional standpoint if you've seen any other example where the government has tried to intervene uh, or perhaps prompt the industry players. Do you think it's a coincidence? Um, it looks like uh, something well scripted. Yes. Okay. Um, I have to admit, as a passenger, of course, I've not got to use them. But, <laughs> but as the a passenger, I'll be yeah. very happy to pay 20 million. Yeah. Although, I have, although let, let's look at uh, the reality on the ground. Yeah? A matatu from Westlands to town, off peak, actually charges 10 shillings. I think the yeah, yeah. Know, that's true. At times we pay 10, 10 bob. As, as users, off peak, at times they even charge us 10 bob. Normally it would be 20, but many times it'll be, you know, 8 p.m., 7.30, 10 bob. Even Nyayo right. Stadium to town, even during the day, 20 shillings. Okay? Um, but now when it comes to peak hours, and maybe the, the experts in the industry can explain to us, I guess my perception is that the charges go up also because of other factors like uh, traffic, mm -hmm. um, and plus demand, demand supply, amount of time it will take to, to drive get to, to, take, yeah. to get to that destination. And that's where maybe also the fact of having segregated lanes for them comes into play. Because if off-peak, when it, it's a direct route from Westlands to town, they'll charge you 10 shillings. If they had that direct route throughout, maybe they could settle at 20, 20 shillings uh, the entire day. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's a discussion for, for another day. Yes. Um, one of the things that uh, different cities have different models as far as public transportation is concerned. Um, when it comes to regulation, some cities have one body taking care of regulation, another body taking care of operation, another one uh, taking care of ownership. So like in, in London, for instance, ownership is by private uh, investors, mm -hmm. whereas regulation is done by a, a state authority. In Paris, it's more public uh, oriented. Um, so. The city of Nairobi now has to adopt, adapt to what works for it, uh, itself best here. Over the years, our, the government's input into the public transport has normally been to try to handle the supply section, okay, where they come and say, uh, we want uh, this from drivers, we want this from uh, conductors, we want uh, this from the vehicles. But they never look at it from the demand section from the passenger's perspective. What do pa passengers want? Passengers want uh, safe travel. Passengers want uh, good, uh, relatively good fares. Yes. Passengers want uh, sto uh, stops at uh, the required places where they want to, want to come out. But we rarely ever get to hear that input from uh, the policy makers. They tend to, in fact, sometimes I get really offended with the words they use. You know, we need to cab with Matatu Menis. You know, the, <laughs> just that <laughs> word on its own, you know, yes. it, it shows you how you look at, 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 at a sector. You know, the transport sector menace. Yet there are people struggling within that sector. So uh, there has to be that kind of paradigm shift now, where in as much as, yes, the suppliers, you know, the investors, we recognize that there are people who rely on it. But we have to also ask ourselves, what, what are the requirements? What do passengers want? Yes. What do the users, what, what's the user experience that, that's required? Mm -hmm. okay? People want to get to where they're moving from point of origin to destination as fast as possible, as safe as possible, as reliable as possible. How can we transform a sector in order for it to give us that? Okay. And it has to be, a, another key thing, it has to be a homegrown solution. I like what Mr. Kimutai said. We don't want to bring Chinese. We don't want to bring uh, a European company to come and run our transport. It has to be us as Kenyans, we as the Kenyan planners, these as the investors and operators, coming in and coming up with something that can work. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the, the NYS system, we've seen it before. We had Nyayo bus coming in when Kenya bus were dominant to try to provide some shift in the, in the sector. And it, it, uh, it, I think it lasted about less than even 10 years. Um, NYS are not specialists in uh, public transport management. Mm -hmm. um, we, 
we that that we know for sure unless they've created a new unit that we don't know about yeah. and we can ask ourselves how long are they going to last you know how long when it starts coming to issues of maintenance of those vehicles when it starts coming to, to issues of how they're going to manage when they have to start replacing vehicles because yes. of wear and tear you know now they're more technical angles we have to ask ourselves are they going to be able to to sustain that so is it a reliable service that we can you know use as an, yeah. an alternative on to our last comments now and uh, bona kim i see you've had uh, plenty of notes yeah. and on to our last comments as it is yet to be gazetted but it is seemingly inevitable with what we see right now what would you want in terms of the coverage to be put forward and also communication from the authorities that are implementing this you know in the absence of effective communication it uh, it becomes uh, an oven that bakes suspicion. Uh, that is the biggest uh, uh, mistake that the Ministry of Transport has put us. They are not communicating, and uh, uh, there's lots of suspicion from every quarter by public transport operators. Mm. And uh, I just want to put it very clearly, and I've even engaged the president in this. We will not allow, as an industry, to be thrown out by investors from outside this country. And he put it very clearly that you will have this and you will operate. So, and uh, I just want to also mention that uh, we have, uh, Matatu business has employed over 100,000 youths in this city. And uh, introduction of, uh, uh, you know, by uh, other, other, other ways of doing the business would jeopardize uh, their position in uh, working mm. and um, we, 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 we've we always tried to create jobs for the youths. You know one vehicle can feed about 10 people. Yes. One vehicle. So um, I think what ministry should be doing is they should be proactive in ensuring that we understand what is supposed to be done or what is coming. Okay. Despite the fact that we have in, gotten involved, I didn't even know of the marking of the lanes. Nobody invited me for that and I just watched on TV that the lanes were being marked and when you say bus rapid transit I understand that concept then I was wondering who has brought these buses when I went for an ab elaborate uh, uh, answer, uh, I mean a discussion with them they said no this one would allow and I remember the, 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 the um, I mean the, the, the press saying that uh, um, it is a PSV lane yes. it wasn't a BRT lane so there have not been any communication from the ministry on that issue. Okay. That now, since we don't have this, and we want to encourage you to go into this, have a test of the same. Yes. That would have been, we, we would have owned it totally. I mean, uh, Medu would not be fighting Medu. because yes. all of us <coughs> would be benefiting. We want to see ourselves getting to town while you are stuck there with your uh, <laughs> private car coming, going, <laughs> and you still are in the same position. Yes. And uh, so that uh, uh, um, 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 it, would, it would encourage them f to leaving their vehicles back How home. soon are the 50 are going to be? We, we, we are in the finality of, uh, um, we, we, tomorrow I'm having a discussion with the, uh, the financiers. And um, of course they're not going to come 50. Yes. We have asked maybe to come at 10. Then 10 we'll allocate them to various circles, but under one management. And then another, with not budgets, because we don't want to bring in also and burn our fingers. Okay. It must be viable. It must be uh, business doing. You know, we must look at the revenues vis a vis, you know, with payments of the loan. So uh, I think that that is the position. There's no suspicion. There's nothing hidden. It's just on the table. We are business people. We want to do it better. Mm -hmm. And uh, if today I saw Medu bring in a bus, I would walk in and ask him, "How much? Where did you get this bus?" It's so simple. Yes. Yeah. It's, I'm not begging when I go to ask. It's just information that I'm looking for. So I think uh, Medu should know that we we we, we ain't out to not box anybody out of the business. We want everybody to benefit. And if, 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 if anything, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a service that uh, drives the economy of this country. Yeah. And there's a good number of, of Nairobians who, you, uh, sh who are there to give you the demand and you should give, be able to give the supply. <clears throat> Bonametsu, as you respond and give your last comment, uh, if indeed that they agree, and I'm sure they are watching, that is the Ministry of Transport, as they gazette this, the, new, the rules to implement this uh, lane, if they agree with the 33-seaters uh, and the 51-seaters th that they can use that lane, this is something you'd embrace wholesomely? Oh, I think I, I would agree with uh, with you that uh, Kimtai has come in and has become a game changer. 
because the last time when we were here, we had a guy here from NTC. He was feeling like uh, we threw the other buses in the bush. <laughs> we used the BRT. I'm happy to hear Kim Jai saying this, and Kenyans are listening to this, that the lane which is actually going on marked. Today I saw it, it's already under the, um, the tunnel of Pangabi. That's where the line is now, as per today. They do not show whether they are going forest road or they are going to town. <laughs> that is, actually, it is there. I was taking a video all the way from, from um, uh, Rusamo, and it ends at uh, Tunnel of Pangani. Uh, me, what I would say here, because Mr. Kimta is here, we must change the way of doing things. Right. We must know that uh, Matato industry it is not the matato industry we used to have before Michoke rules came. Today we have people who are actually well educated, lawmakers, all in this industry. And we want, if it is a minister who is being appointed by the government to be a minister of transport, he, me, I would even propose and I would like Kim Tai to push on that. Can we have somebody who have a knowledge of matato to be a minister of transport? <laughs> because if these well, guys, much more to if these guys can the wake up industry. one morning and start marking the road, they would have seek advice from Kim Tai or from this guy. He has a very good idea. He would have told them, first of all, identify the stations. Identify whatever, whatever, whatever. So when they are coming to mark, they have a plan. Mm. Yes. They have a plan how to go about it. But you'll embrace it if they allow 33 seaters to start. I'm very happy. That's why I've said that Kimtai have changed the game. Okay. And I know my people are listening now that uh, that lane is for that three seaters and above. Okay. Uh, so, so that's my comment. You have a couple of minutes uh, really quick. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I think we have to embrace change. That's very clear. Some of it can come through trial and error. You know, coincidentally, I wrote an article uh, about two years ago on how we should even consider giving Matatus their own, their own lens on uh, one, of, one of my blogs. Uh, we also have to think about diversity beyond just uh, road transit. We also have to start thinking about how we're integrating our non-motorized transit. You know, we've not yet talked about how we're improving pedestrianization, how we're thinking about uh, giving options to cyclists and thinking about uh, cable transit and other modes of transportation. A study indicated that uh, for BRT to be properly apl applied in Kenya, we should, in Nairobi, we will, we will need about 100 kilometers of BRT, which would be about 4,000 buses. And obviously, we're not ready for that. Therefore, and the, the, the element of integration yes. becomes extremely, extremely critical. But I want to conclude with a small challenge to my two uh, friends here. The Matatu industry is critical. Okay? Many people stay away from it for various factors. Uh, safety concerns, uh, rudeness from operators. Can we have some form of training for the crew? Can we have some form of customer service training for the crew? Um, some of these people are hardworking. They work for up to 12 to 16 hours, yes. some of these drivers, some of these crew. How can we train them? How can we uh, make them uh, even, even more proud of, the, of what they do? Because as we move into these systems, we would want them to be the ones taking up, coming up into this, this BRT, it's not getting new new people mm -hmm. you know, from beat NOS or, yeah. or wherever. We would want them to be the ones come. But of course, it would have to come with a culture change. And I'll, I'll challenge uh, my, my colleagues here, even as, as a Matatu user, you know, we would want that, 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 that change too.